attended North Carolina Central University. Eagle Pride Amplified. I went to Florida A&M University where we strike, strike, and strike again. I am the epitome of a Morehouse man. I went to North Carolina A&T Aggie Pride. And I went to the real HU, Hampton University. I went to Howard University, the real HU. <laughs> People in New York don't want to be in a relationship. People come to New York focused on their career. I am not expected to pay any bills. If it's too expensive for you to live here on your own, then you probably shouldn't be here. I want to talk to you today about mattering. So do y'all know that you matter? Men of color are being hunted down like big it's... game in, in the U.S. Yeah. Not just men. Right. Right. Don't talk about it. I'm an action person. I don't know. While we're talking, you're eating popcorn, watching the conversation. But you're not here to be entertained. You're here to contribute. It's a really strong connection to have in a city that's so large. Don't miss the graduate Saturdays during HBCU live games at halftime and at Aspire.tv. Many survivors want to put the experience of their cancer diagnosis and treatment behind them and look to the future. But there are a number of reasons why it is important for all breast cancer survivors to check in with their health care providers after their breast cancer treatment is over. Such follow-up supports a survivor's overall well-being and health. I was relieved that I was done with the, the treatment, but I, I still feared, and to this day I still, I'm, anything that, that happens if I feel sick, right away the first thing that comes to my mind is it cancer again. But I've learned to put it in God's hands. I can't live with fear the rest of my life, so. The main area of follow-up that this program will focus on is surveillance, taking the steps necessary to find a breast cancer recurrence or a new primary breast cancer that occurs either in the treated breast for women who have had a lumpectomy or in the opposite breast. In this program, I will use the term follow-up care to mean surveillance. My name is Kennedy Yanko. I am an artist. I do three-dimensional sculptures on rubber. I'm originally a painter and I'm beginning to move into virtual reality. I started working three-dimensionally in 2009 with my collection called Wu Wei, which means to allow in Chinese. And I was allowing the paint to do what it wanted to do and it was getting these really cool details just from the way it interacted with itself. So I took the paint off the canvas and I was making skins. And then I started working in rubber. Um, and then I started working with robotics and LED lights and playing with the way that they're installed. And what feels like the next process for me is to create an interactive experience for the audience and no better way to do that but through virtual reality where a lot of our technology is moving and um, you know the foundation of how we're going to begin to understand and interpret experiences. It was pretty easy a uh, uh, balancing between school and gangs. I was getting an education at the school and I was getting an education in the streets at the same time. I always had a conscience. I wasn't the type of guy who go out there mugging people and robbing people's homes and stuff like that. You know, I was just a gangbanger, a decent gangbanger, <laughs> probably you could even say. I was just a bad boy in the hood. I kind of tried a, a lot of drugs, but the one that, uh, that relieved a lot of that pain was heroin. All the pain in the world was gone. Uh, the hell with racism, the hell with everything else. Just give me a $2 bag of heroin. That's how I felt. Surprised he's still here. He's, he's been in every place that kids shouldn't be. The gangs, the drugs, the 99% of the people don't come out of it. They end up back there some way. And then they crumble, and, and he hasn't. And not only has he, he hasn't crumbled, he's grown stronger and stronger and stronger with his pledge to help the youth of today. Mm -hmm.